Our reading is taken from Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. They spent their time in learning from the apostles, taking part in the fellowship and sharing in the fellowship meals and prayers. Many miracles and wonders were being done through the apostles and everyone was filled with awe. All the believers continued together in close fellowship and shared their belongings with one another. They would sell their property and possessions and distribute the money among all, according to what each one needed. Day after day they met as a group in the temple, and they had their meals together in their homes, eating with glad and humble hearts, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 21. Then Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and, the Sabbath, and on the Sabbath he went as usual to the synagogue. He stood up to read the scriptures and was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All the people in the synagogue had their eyes fixed on him. As he said to them, this passage of scripture has come true today as you heard it being read. This is the word of the Lord.
conscious awareness of our world through sight and sound, through touch and taste, that God um, makes this world known to us. And uh, as the sound fades away, I often hear other sounds around me. And it, it's almost as if the two, the sound of the bowl and the sounds of the world around me, whether it's traffic on the street outside or um, noises of the family getting up around me, um, that they, they all become part of the same thing. But the particular prayer I find myself finishing with is a prayer that my life might reverberate with the song of God's love. And so I find I've been starting each day in that way. When I came to read this passage about Jesus preaching in Nazareth, such familiar words, I found myself thinking, what do those words, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, mean? And I found myself turning to this image, to a life which reverberates with the song of God's love for all the world. So I offer you that as a, a sort of a channel into this reading. As we think about Jesus as one whose life reverberates with the song of God's love for all the world. And what that might mean for us. As Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is within me. His life rings out with that clear note. With that in mind, a couple of other things. The first of all is that there's, there's a sort of a sense of cascade to this. That when one thing starts ringing, then others do too. The Spirit causes Jesus' life to reverberate with that song. And he becomes the starting point for something. He's the starting point of everything, of course. But for Luke, particularly, as he writes his two-part work, Gospel and Acts, Luke wants to tell us that this reverberation carries on into the lives of the followers of Jesus, into the apostles into all who receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There's a, a sort of a chain reaction so that each life becomes a sort of a sounding board for that song of God's love made known to us in Jesus. And of course, as we, as we see that cascade, we recognize it as something which comes on down into our own lives. So that our prayer for each one of us might be that our lives too can reverberate with the love of God. That we, in our lives, can be channels of God's grace. But a second part thing about, about this about this uh, passage and about this image is about a, a sort of a dynamic between insiders and outsiders. There's something here which is, first of all, in this passage, just, um, is just stated by Jesus as he reads from Isaiah. Who is the grace of God for? And as good Methodists, of course, we would say, for everyone. But it's given a sort of a twist here, isn't it, by Isaiah? He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. And the way Jesus goes on to develop this later in his sermon, in a way that really gets... Uh, that gets the backs of the, Naz uh, of, of, of the people of Nazareth is that he points out to them that the grace of God which they'd always assumed was for them the chosen people they're, they're good Jewish people they go to church every Sabbath they, they do what they should they, they read their scriptures 
They're in touch with God. But he reminds them that the grace of God is actually for a Syrian warlord and for a Jordanian widow. People who were outside the scope of what they thought of as God's grace. And of course, we know from the whole ministry of Jesus about the way in which his life reverberates that he saw that as being principally for the poor and the oppressed. That is a challenge for us because so often in the life of the church, we, we do want to try to keep God and God's grace controlled. And the third thing to, to note about this maybe is, is simply that God's grace for those who it, it, it reaches out to as it reverberates in their lives is transformative and liberative. It, it changes the life of women and men. It changes their lives. So I wonder whether from all of that we can, we can take some indication of what we can expect if our lives are to be lives which reverberate with the song of God's love. What can you expect from your ministry, Katie? And, and what can your churches as a circuit, what can your churches and communities, what can each of your lives expect? I just want to suggest three things to, to maybe give an indication. They're, they're, they're only hints, I think, but I, but I hope they might be helpful to you. The first is about living our faith in public. This is the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. And he actually steps out. And of course, the song of God's love is only going to reverberate around our world if it's done out in the open. It needs space to sound out and to ring. Our ministry belongs out in the world and not within either the four walls of a church building or within the confines of one online Facebook group. Our ministry is public and and we are called to allow our lives to reverberate with God's love so that other people can hear it. They will hear the truth of that sound ringing out. The second thing is that we, we must not hold it with any box. Um, the phrase outside the box has, of course, become a bit of an old chestnut, hasn't it? But, you know, boxes do not belong with God's grace. We will be surprised by the people who God's grace will touch. We will be surprised by the ways in which God wants to act. And in fact, the way in which our lives are to reverberate should always have something of the extempore about it, something of the sort of jazz improvisation. We should never expect to be following train tracks. We're wanderers. And so we expect to be surprised. I don't know who the future of the Methodist Church lies with, but one thing is clear, it doesn't lie with us. If our church is to be renewed... If we are to grow, then other people are going to come to know Jesus through us. And they will become the people who make the decisions and who are opened up to God's grace, who have their lives transformed and liberated and changed. So don't hold on to anything too tight. Don't be stuck in boxes. And the third thing I would take from one the final thing that Jesus said in the reading, we, the, past, the little bit we heard. Today, this scripture has rung in your ears. Today. We spend a lot of our time planning. 
certainly for me, you know, I have to spend a lot of time thinking about five-year plans for the district and that sort of thing. And uh, I was re-invited yesterday formally at Synod for another five years. And uh, that means, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking ahead, thinking six years from now until I retire. So while that planning goes on, of course, there's an old Yiddish proverb that says, uh, we plan, God laughs. But actually, you know, all of that forward planning, all of that looking ahead, necessary as it is, Jesus says, today. And my third thing is just this. Today is the time. You are the people. If God's grace is going to reverberate in our world, this is where it begins. Today with you. May God bless you in your ministry together. Thank you, thank you. It's worth telling everyone who's watching in the warmth and comfort of their homes that in this church it's actually rather chilly at the moment. Um, and that's because we've got our doors open. And I think that that really makes me think of a wonderful symbol for what, uh, what you've been saying to us, Andrew, about this reverberation that... We don't just reverberate within the walls of our church. Our doors are open, we reverberate and we take the love of God and we meet people in the world outside of the boxes of our church buildings and we engage with people there and share the love and the grace of God in the world. And that's the challenge that we're faced with now as we move out of this very strange time that we've been in for several months um, into whatever the future may hold, that we reverberate in the world, not within our church building. So thank you for sharing that message with us, Andrew. We are recognizing and celebrating today, maybe, the coming together of two circuits. Um, I'm very aware, I mean, we maybe should sort of just be aware that, you know, certainly in the ministry team, um, Annette is coming in to join Raj, and Lindsay and Katie and Kathy. Um, and we are hoping that that will be one good new team, um, but also new churches which are coming together and getting to know one another. We're just going to um, have a short uh, beginning before we actually formally welcome Katie, um, in which we also recognize Kathy as superintendent of the whole of this new circuit. We celebrate today the formation of a new circuit by bringing together the Romilly Circuit and the United Stockport Circuits. Cathy, as superintendent, to you is committed the responsibility for the life and work of this new circuit. Will you, with your colleagues, lay and ordained, care for its people, inspire its witness, and watch over its life in the name of Christ? I will, and I ask God to help me. Together, the words on the screen. Receive you, Superintendent. We pray that God's blessing will rest upon you. Amen. I have to say, we have already begun that work together as a team, and personally, I feel that it's a, a very exciting journey that we are already on. We've been working together as the Romilly and United Stockport circuits really over the last year, building those relationships already. And so it feels like, it almost feels like it's not new starting today um, because we have already got a firm basis upon which we can build. Um, and in terms of my ministerial colleagues, I'm excited to be working with, with all of you. Katie, can I invite you to come forward? Sisters and brothers, I now present to you Katie Smith, whom the conference has appointed to serve in this new United Stockport circuit. Katie, will you hold before us the story of God's love and mercy, above all the gospel of our Saviour, Jesus Christ? And will you be among us as one who preaches the word of God, administers baptism, presides at the Lord's Supper, 
teaches the faith and cares for the flock. Join with me in proclaiming the gospel of life and hope. Let's say together. Through Through Christ, Christ, we we have good good news to share. Katie, will you hold before us God's call to holy living and be among us as one who awakens the careless and strengthens the faithful? I will. I ask God to help me. And I invite you all to join with me in commitment to the way of Christ. May we we reveal reveal Christ's way through our our words and and examples. Will you hold before us God's commitment to human community, to our neighbourhoods and all who live within them, and to the world that God has made? I will. I ask God to help me. And I invite you all to join with me in sharing God's all-embracing love. May we respond to Christ in in all all we meet. meet. And just to reiterate what Andrew reminded us of at the beginning of the service, we offer a special blessing for Katie today because as a probationer minister, today doesn't only represent her beginning in a new circuit, it represents her beginning in ministry. And that is a very significant moment today a time that you will remember throughout the rest of your ministry and so we want to just acknowledge that today that this isn't just a start here but it's a start within the whole ministry of God into which the church uh, is welcoming you and to which God has called you. Um, I would at this point give you a hug. We'll do that sometime later. Yeah, we'll hug um, I want to invite Sharon who is going to on behalf of our team of circuit stewards also offer you a welcome. Welcome, Katie, and your family. From all of the new new and the old circuits, we really welcome you. While many are are here, not here, we want to let you know we are thinking of you and praying for you as you start your new journey. And we wish to travel with you on that journey, supporting you the whole way through. We're here to support you as well as you support us. So welcome. Can we now say together, sisters and brothers, will you welcome Katie and will you offer her your friendship, support and prayers as we join together in the work to which God has called us? With God's help, we will. Thanks, Sharon. Katie's now just going to offer a brief response. Thank you, Sharon and... Uh, Kathy and Andrew for those words of welcome and thank you to everyone who's put this service together under these difficult circumstances perhaps most of all to Christine who even as we worship is running around making sure everything's clean and right for us as we go I'm absolutely delighted and totally excited to be part of this newly extended United Stockport service A quote that has really resonated with me over the last few years is one from Martin Luther King Jr. who said, Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. When we were exploring whether God had called me into ministry, Jason and I tried to work all the permutations of when would be a good time to follow his call. And in human terms, we worked out There's no good time to make a change like this to our lives. But we knew that God was calling and we moved in his time. And the fact that God's time has brought me to churches that excite me as much as Romilly and Woodley and Windlehurst and to a circuit where there is vision and purpose and forward-looking in the way that this new United Stockport circuit has It's confirmation to me that God knew that staircase and knew when the time was to take that first step. I'm fairly sure that if I'd known that the step marked probation in in ministry also was marked with global pandemic and lockdown, that might have seriously put me off 
moving at the time we felt God's move. I think for me the worst thing about this situation is how much more difficult it is to meet and get to know all of you, both in the room where we won't be able to chat afterwards and those people who are joining us on Zoom and YouTube. I hope you will be patient and kind with me and I hope that over the next weeks and months we will get to know one another and share our stories of faith. And despite all these difficulties, I still believe that it is God's timing that has brought us here, brought us to this place at this time. And I know that despite how strange and difficult it has been, this time is one in which we have all learned new things about ourselves and about God. It's been a time when the church has had to learn new ways to be and relate to each other. And it's also been a time when I think we can see maybe more clearly than before how God is at work outside our churches, in the communities around us, as well as in our churches. And so as we move forward, my prayer is that we will find ways to talk to each other of the faith that has got us through lockdown, of the things that God has been doing, and that as we look for guidance for where God wants us to take the next step, we will know that we will move in his time and his way, even if we're not sure where those steps are going to end up. There are lots and lots of people that I feel I'd like to thank at this moment. First of all, my family, Jason, Poppy and Abigail, my mum and dad who are here, but also loads of others who can't be here, Jason's parents, our siblings and their families. I'd like to thank them for their unswerving belief in me and their support and love throughout this journey. I'd like to thank my church family, my friends, and the people that I trained with at Queen's, many of whom will be joining us online. Please know that your prayers have carried me through this time and helped me come to this place. I want to thank Kathy and Raj and Lindy, Lindsay and Annette who have already made me feel so welcome and spoken words of comfort as I panic about just how I'm going to be a minister now. For the circuit stewards and the property team, and for Ken particularly, who are working to make the months ready for us, and for the stewards and property teams at the individual churches who have spent the summer putting in a massive amount of work into risk assessing and working out what might allow us to start meeting for worship in those places again. And I'd like to thank everyone else who has already sent me messages of welcome. And also those who are holding back, not wanting to overwhelm me, but who I know I will meet and get to know over the next few months. So, especially to everyone in the new United Stockport circuit, I thank you for your welcome. I will work with you and I will pray for you. Amen. We're now going to listen to some other greetings that are going to be brought to us by the magic of technology. Hello, my name's Chris Gordon. I'm one of the councillors from Brebury and Woodley and also the parish secretary for St Barnabas uh, Anglican Church in Brebury. I'd like to offer a big uh, welcome to uh, Katie 
Smith, Reverend Katie Smith, and taking up her new role as minister uh, for our area. And I'm uh, aware that we uh, will have, hopefully, sorry, I'm, I'm sure that we'll have the same relationship with her that we had, wonderful relationship we had with, uh, with Will Hunter when he was uh, uh, at Woodley Methodists. Um, and, we, and we hope to meet in person soon because of this, with this COVID, I think it really would be nice to meet sometime. Uh, I'll also send my good wishes to the, um, to the new United Stockport circuit, which has just been developed. And I will pray for success in their mission over the years. Thank you. All right. One of the other councillors for, uh, for Brevery and Woodley. Uh, and like Chris, um, I'm involved with my local church, which is George Lane URC. And for my sins, I'm the secretary there. Um, I'd like to welcome Katie to not only to her church, our, our local Methodist church, but also the area in general. Um, I wish her all the luck in the world in this new role. She's got a massive role reading about details that you've sent through to us, but I do really, really wish her well. I'm sure she'll find, as I did when I first moved into this area as a councillor, that the vast majority of people are really friendly and welcoming. I'm sure she'll settle in really, really easily. And I do look forward to meeting with her in person once uh, circumstances allow us to do that. Right, uh, again, um, I'm Councillor Stuart Corris, a fellow ward member for Brebri and Woodley on the council. Uh, it's a delightful opportunity to meet you, even if it's not in person. Uh, I hope you enjoy your new job. I don't want to repeat what the others have said about uh, things going on because it gets boring that way. And coming last, of course, I can always get away with, well, I'm the more important than the rest of them. I can say that to a certain extent because I'm also chair of audit on the Stockport Council, so good responsibility. I would be remiss of me to mention that uh, Chris is also the deputy mayor this year, and he has been mayor previously. <laughs> but, you know, we love to meet people, and hopefully we'll be meeting soon. And do enjoy your new job. and all your family may God be with you all as you minister to the people of the United Stockport Circuit and from Vicky who's one of our circuit stewards welcome to Katie and your family and best wishes to all across the new United Stockport Circuit on this very exciting day I think that's perhaps just a selection of them but that's that's wonderful to hear from uh, friends and colleagues in the circuit and beyond the circuit as well there so thanks for being able to put those up Dan we're going to draw together this time of welcome and celebration as we sing or don't sing uh, the wonderful hymn great is thy faithfulness
Thanks be to God. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. And so let us pray. In faith we pray to God, who is more ready to hear than we are to ask. Let us pray for the whole Church of God, that rejoicing in our richness and variety, we may seek peace and unity. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Let us pray for the churches of our circuit and district and for other churches in this area. And as the people of the Methodist churches in Romley circuit become one with their brothers and sisters in United Stockport, we remember that with new beginnings, there is often a laying aside of familiar things, a sense of nostalgia for things that are past. Yet, Lord, we know that you are always renewing, equipping and leading your church to serve the present age. We give thanks for all those faithful brothers and sisters who give their time and energy working to support our circuits. As some lay down the responsibilities of many years and say some take up the new work amongst us. Lord, as we remember all our church communities by name, we give thanks for all the work and worship they have and will do, that rejoicing in our common heritage, we may strengthen each other and be built up in love. And so we pray for Christ Church Methodist URC. Dialston Lane Methodist Church, Davenport Methodist Church, Edgeley Community Church, Hazel Grove Methodist Church, Heaton Mersey Methodist Church, Heaton Moor United Church. Jubilee Methodist Church, Marple Bridge. Marple Methodist Church. The Ridge Methodist Church, Marple. Romley Methodist Church. St John's Methodist Church, Cheadle Heath. Tibiot Dale Methodist Church. Trinity Methodist Church, Bramall Lane. Windlehurst Methodist Church, High Lane. And Woodley Methodist Church. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Lord of the world and our humanity. Forgive our weakness, our judgment of others, our need to be always right. Restore us to a way of living that honours you and your whole creation. Thanks be to God. Let us rejoice in the communion of saints, that strengthened by their faithful example, we may follow the way of Christ and live to God's praise and glory. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Give us wisdom, Lord, to know your will and courage to do it. May our words declare your love and may our compassion give substance to our words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When one year ago, more or less exactly, we inaugurated the first manifestation of the United Stockport Circuit, we sang the hymn that we're going to sing now, and it seemed right and proper to sing it again today, because it's a hymn that I think for me sums up.
want to thank everyone for joining us uh, here at Tiviotdale Methodist Church for this service today, whether you're in the building or at home or in one of the other churches in the circuit or wherever you are. I think for many of us, it was probably the first time we had to set our alarm clock on a Sunday morning for about five months. Um, and it's nice to put on proper clothes to come to church rather than pyjamas and slippers. Um, if you're still in your pyjamas and slippers at home, that's absolutely fine. Come as you are, you're welcome. And it's been wonderful to share this act of worship together. I do want to offer some thanks. Um, putting together a service like this is no mean feat. I first of all want to thank the, the music band that came and prepared and recorded that music earlier on in the week. That's David Clark, Rick Price, Liz Morell, Sharon Fraser and Rachel Chambers. Um, for Dan and Lawrence for being totally wonderful overseeing the tech side of things. You may have caught sight of them running around making sure everything was running smoothly. Thank you so much. Um, and I hope the experience for those of you watching at home has been a good one. Um, and then last but definitely not least to Christine, our circuit administration manager, for making sure everything has run smoothly and safely today. You've worked uh, above and beyond uh, the last week, Christine, to make sure this service could happen. And I want to Thank you very much for that. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that in every generation you reveal your love for the world and set before your people your word of life and hope. We thank you for Jesus Christ, your son, in whom you have made known your way of perfect love and in whose dying and rising we see your final purpose. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, who leads your people into all truth, for the service and witness of your church, and for the preaching of the word and the celebration of the sacraments through which you renew and strengthen us. All honor and glory be yours in the church and in the world, in time and in eternity, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of grace, stir up in us the gifts of his grace and enable each of us in our discipleship and service. And may God, Spirit, Son and Father, bless you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.